Hello, I'm Maria Soreo. The San Ramon Canyon Stormwater Reduction Project is moving ahead after years of planning. On March 5th, the Rancho Palos Verdes City Council approved the contract for the multi-million dollar public works project. RPV Mayor Susan Brooks spoke to Liz Brown Swanson about the critical need to address San Ramon. This is a pipe that has to be drawn from the top of uh, on the east side of the peninsula in the Marymount College vicinity going right through underneath the switchbacks. Those switchbacks are those curvy streets that go down on Palos Verdes Drive East to Palos Verdes Drive South and it will culminate out and run entirely through Rancho Palos Verdes property out in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Right now it's a mishmash of activity that takes place in the middle of the San Ramon Canyon and the landslide ends up at 25th Street in that disastrous area when we often have floods la floods, and cars cannot go through. Right. And it is just a hair from missing the uh, 450 residents that happen to live in the mobile home park below, which by the way is in the city of Los Angeles. So we've spent the last year uh, working very hard as a council and as a city um, to get the funding for this project that had actually been identified a couple of years ago. Um, and now we have finally, after all the bureaucracy and all the permits and everything that's had to take place between the Army Corps of Engineers and everyone else, we finally have a project. We have identified the funding will be coming out of our CIP reserves and we are ready to go forward for the second half of the funding. The first part is a matching grant uh, from the state. It is a $20 million project. $20 million. I mean, that's almost the size of our budget, mm -hmm. which is $24 million. So, so it really is a when critical look at project that, that it's critical. we haven't had a lot of heavy rains, but when those heavy right. rains hit, that's when you realize and that it that's just threat. Even when it's not a heavy rain, it, ironically, um, moisture seeping out of that um, slide area can bring water onto, into that area. And beyond though, the water that was coming down with the debris and the runoff and the problems, also the way that that land is compromising, which could be PV Drive East, right? I mean, that's also a huge issue that's separate or connected. Well, PV Drive East to the extent that it's going under the so, switchbacks. So right. what it's doing is it's compromising the stability of the switchbacks. And in the event that they were going to that, if you see how close, if yeah. Palos Verdes Drive East, how close that canyon is, to the edge of the two edges of the switchbacks, um, precipitously close. There, there is an emergency program intact. However, we believe that we're ready to. Um, well, we'll be breaking ground within a month. The San Ramon project is set to begin in May and completed within a year. And it was an event that was out of this world when the third grade class at Salido Elementary School made contact with the International Space Station. Twelve students were selected to ask questions to Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, and it was a moment that everyone in the room will never forget, including our mayor, Susan Brooks. I, it brought chills. I got chills. I had tears in my eyes. And being with these children once again as a, as a former teacher was so exciting and inspiring. It just made me want to go right back into the classroom. But the fact that we could communicate, and when we heard him finally crystal clear, um, astronaut Hatfield, it was absolutely unbelievable. Principal Kevin Allen was thrilled for the children to have this unique experience. I was so excited for our students because I really believe that these kids are going to walk away from this different people. You know, their, their potential, their possibilities that are in front of them. And so for me, I was so excited for my students that we could even offer this, this to our students. It was really exciting. In order to make the connection with outer space, it took over a hundred hours of volunteer time from the Palos Verdes Amateur Radio Club, who made sure that the voice from above could be heard all the way here on Earth. We had actually practiced this several times, and so we knew what the antenna was supposed to do. We knew that we would start to get more noise because the sun reflects off the space station, and so all that uh, was according to plan. So we knew we were probably okay, but then when that circle started to go over and we didn't hear anything at first, uh, that was a little trying, yes. I know you had so many man hours, you guys probably worked harder than anybody else. So at the moment when the astronaut actually came through, what went through your mind? 
Well, it uh, it was very gratifying, I have to say. <laughs> he uh, and he was very generous to us too. But you you heard the signal uh, at the at the top. It was very strong, and so that tells us that the technical part was in good shape. So we're we're happy about that. And while we all listened, it was the kids who had the experience of talking to an astronaut all the way up in space. Um, it was really exciting. It's like a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Could you imagine how far away they were? It was really fun. It was really fun. What about for you, Jessica? I was so nervous. <laughs> I would have been nervous too because they were all the way up in space and they were answering your questions now. How did you guys come up with your questions? Um, well, we got a piece of homework and it asked us five, uh, five questions that we had asked to uh, the astronauts and we just came up with good ones and they started picking them out. So you thought up your own questions and then they they picked you? Yeah. Now, what, what did your parents say when you, they found out you guys were going to be the ones talking to the astronauts? She said she was super happy. <laughs> Some 700 schools are selected to be a part of the program through NASA. And from Salido Elementary to Peninsula High, where a brand new pool was finally opened for business, Principal Mitzi Kress said it was a long time coming, but definitely worth the wait. We appreciate all the support of so many people in the community, um, especially the Prindle family. This would not have happened if it wasn't for the Prindle family. We were uh, doing our fundraising, selling things like this scarf for $10. <laughs> it would have taken us years to get to this point if it weren't for this this wonderful family. For people that don't know the story, tell us about the Prindles. Uh, the Prindles are um, parents of a student who went here named Jackie, um, who unfortunately um, passed away a couple of years ago. And um, in honor of her, they made a very huge donation. While Jackie was here at Peninsula High School, um, the pool was her home. Uh, she owned the pool in swimming and water polo and she was just a bright light on this campus, always full of energy, um, but it's just perfect that forever with the scoreboard with her name on it, everybody will always say, who's that Jackie? And she's somebody pretty darn special. Now, Mitzi, you're pretty hands-on here at Peninsula. What was it like for you the very first time you saw somebody swim in the pool? It was a freezing, freezing day. And um, it was a couple of weeks ago. And I got the word that kids are in the pool. They're, they're practicing. And I came down with my, my cell phone camera. Uh, and I just looked at them. And it was just joyous. It, I cannot begin to tell you how cold it was. It was just freezing. And there they were in the pool. But they did not care and uh, it, just, uh, it just warmed my heart. We also caught up with some swimmers and water polo players who were pretty excited to have the pool open on their campus. Uh, it was awesome because we were all in as a team and we were having a lot of fun. In our first practice, we've been waiting all season, so it was, it was great. Okay, and then what, what's it like as far as playing? Because obviously it's deeper now all the way through the pool. Yeah, um, that makes a big difference because you don't have to worry about goalies pushing off the bottom okay. like they used to. On one side, we actually had to have a goal bigger because the goalies could push off the bottom. And um, so now we don't have to worry about that anymore. And it's a way bigger pool, too, like in terms of length. Right. And that will definitely help us as a team because we have some speed on our team, so that'll help, too. Okay. And a reminder from the Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee. Do you have a plan in case disaster strikes? Remember to prepare a plan in advance with everyone in your family. Talk about what each family member will be responsible for before, during, and after the disaster. Also, have a meeting place and practice your plan. These tips will keep your family safer and more prepared when a disaster strikes. For more information on disaster preparedness, you can go to palosverdes.com slash rpv slash emergency preparedness. It was a day to celebrate wellness at Marymount College as they opened their health and wellness fair to the community. Many unique vendors and participants came out to celebrate health, mind, and body. Marymount's president, Dr. Michael Brophy, expressed the importance of wellness for everyone. Well, the college, you know, obviously we want to focus on our students' wellness, but we really want to be a good partner for in the community, and obviously any resources we can share, in this case, wellness, we want to share. And as you know, we do arts, we do athletics, but um, 
you know, this is a this is a topic that everyone of all ages can be connected to, and I'm, I'm happy to say I think this is the biggest turnout we've ever had for, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, partners and vendors. So today we have um, all kinds of places from the communities came out. We have places like our free spinal screening, food body connection, a lot of local vegetarian restaurants. We're just trying to represent wellness as a whole, not just as a physical or as eating, but as mental health. We have AA here. We have a lot of great uh, support programs. So it's really great that we have a community out here to support us. Great. Yeah, so this was a real cool event to kind of bring out to the community and promote health and wellness. Uh, as well as for our club, Ductus Exemplo, we got to set up our own booth and we're trying to raise money so that we can put on more events like this. So on Thursday at Veggie Grill, whenever you go in and you get a meal, 50% of that is going to our club. Yeah, yeah they're really generous with it and they, they set up a booth, they're giving away free food also. So that was really cool and it's just a cool thing to promote wellness. Music therapy, it's a practical way to reach the whole person. That's what we're going for. And music therapy, it's music and it's therapy combined. Fitness can be something as simple as just getting 10,000 steps in a day. How do you know how many steps you take? You don't have to count them. You can get a pedometer. You can get a bracelet that tells you that works with your smartphone. But 10,000 steps is not that unreasonable. Walking around the campus, walking to the grocery store to get a few things, um, walking further away from the mall when you park your car, all those ways are easy ways to get fitness into your life. Now this is the first year that the health fair is actually open to the public and we see a lot of people out here today. Oh my gosh, not only students either. There's a lot of people from the community, which is really nice. I know everybody got um, an invitation and a flyer in the mail that lives around here, so I'm glad to see that they're showing up. And fitness is important for everyone, no matter what your age, um, and it's never too late to start on your journey to being more fit, never too late. Any dog, any breed, can be a therapy dog if they're, if they're trained, as long as they have the, the right temperament. I've seen Dobermans, I've seen uh, Rottweilers, uh, we have everything. We have purebreds, we have uh, rescue dogs, you know, mutts, and we've, I've seen them anywhere from Chihuahuas to Great Danes. Um, it, it really just depends on the dog, and it's it's... It's the relationship between the animal and the patient. The cancer support community, uh, Redondo Beach, has been on the Redondo Beach Pier for nearly 26 years. And uh, we offer over 150 free programs um, for cancer patients and their families per month. Um, it's a wonderful resource. The core of what we do is support groups, but we also have uh, networking groups, exercise programs, um, uh, educational programs where doctors come and speak. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful place for anybody who's been impacted by cancer. We're happy to be here in this venue. It's, it's um, the first time we've been here and uh, to be able to reach out to um, college age kids um, who might um, know somebody or have somebody in their family who has cancer. So um, we're always trying to get the word out. Atomic Boxing is a full total body workout. You work your, uh, your abs, your core, your legs, your arms, everything's going to be taken care of. Most of all, we're going to take care of your body fat. We're going to work on you getting you fit, getting in shape, and getting stronger. Okay, that's what we're doing. But it's like based on martial arts, so with all the latest craze with MMA, we do the kickboxing part. The confidence level that you get behind it is immense. You can really, really build up your confidence. It looks like you're all eating healthy here. What are we, what are we having? Veggie this is our favorite grill. place. Oh, yeah? Veggie Grill, yeah. Okay. It's like all vegan and gluten free, right? Yeah, yeah. dairy free. It's so yeah. good. And like this little carrot cake, I don't think it has any bread in it or anything. Yeah, I don't know if you can quote me on so that. Good. So we don't feel guilty after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the number one thing is does it taste good? Yes, yes it's, it's so, so good. good. That's, so that's good. why we're here. We're going to have seconds. Yeah, we're yeah, going to have nice. seconds. <laughs> we're all about the flavor. And uh, people are just amazed when they eat our food. People come back over and over and over again. And I can tell you firsthand, that carrot cake was delicious. And congratulations go out to the Terranea Resort, who have started off 2013 with several prestigious travel awards. The luxury property has been recognized as a leading resort on Condé Nast Traveler's 2013 Gold List. The resort also made its debut on Travel and Leisure's 11th Annual 500 list of best hotels in the world. This year, the annual awards received a record number of votes from their readers, over 46,000. Only 370 hotels, resorts, and cruise lines rated above 90 out of 100 points, with Terranea included in that group. It's time for sports, and today I'll introduce you to a Peninsula High senior who's been playing basketball throughout her high school career. 
but her passion for the game started many years before that. Let's catch up with Erin Sato. Basketball has been running in my family for the, like our whole lifetime. Really? My two sisters actually played at PV, okay. so um, I've been growing up watching them play, and I just I wanted to be just like them, so I joined basketball, and that's where I am now. So you must have been started playing when you were even younger than high school age, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we played in an Asian league, and it's like primarily Asians okay. to give the Asians a chance to. Um, experience the basketball community and so I've been playing that since first grade. Yeah. Interesting, what is the difference between playing in an Asian league versus just playing with everyone here at Penn? Um, there's a lot more competition, I mean, <laughs> not to be rude, but it, it's a, a different view in high school. There's a lot more height right. and there's a lot more talent too as well. So it's a lot different, yeah. It's interesting, and I was going to get into this later, but I'm going to jump into it now. Um, Coach Michael Cooper, who played with the Lakers for a long time, he, when he was with the Sparks, he told me that girls play much harder than guys do. Do you agree with that, or why do you think that is? Um, I think I think girls definitely do play harder. I think it's because the guys think they're too cool for school. Yeah. <laughs> I think the girls just want to play, uh, just uh, play like it's their last game. So, yeah. What do you think over the last three years that you've that you've learned the most playing basketball here? Um, definitely to be confident in myself. Um, I came my first year of varsity. I was a starting point guard, and that was like my first games. I was really scared like I couldn't I wasn't sure if I could handle the pressure of handling the ball during games during tight games but um, my teammates had a lot of faith in me and they taught me that I just had to be um, confident with myself and yeah what do you when younger players look up to you obviously what kind of advice do you give them or what kind of questions do they ask it's interesting that you talked about um, being scared you know when you first come into the situation yeah. um, I just tell them my experiences I try to let them know that I went through the same thing and they can get through it if I could get through it then they can get through it so yeah that's that's basically it okay. <laughs> and then talk to me a little bit about um, your coach and what you've learned from her over the, the past few years um, from Coach Natalie, uh, I've learned a lot. She, she's a great basketball player, and you know, sh to see her success, I want, I like, I'm pretty sure the whole team would like this. But me personally, I want to be successful, just as successful as her, and it's just a great um, idol to look up to. Okay. As a group, um, are you friends with all of the basketball team? How does that kind of work? Oh yeah, it's, it's like it's like my second family here. Um, there's not much drama. It's great. Like I love these girls to death. And what do you do when you're not playing basketball, you're not studying? What else do you like to do to kind of relax? You know, I would like to say something, but I <laughs> really don't say, I really don't do anything but basketball. If I'm not playing basketball here, I'm helping um, local communities with their, with like youth basketball, volunteering, yeah. And do you follow any pro teams or any college teams? Um, just the, I like to watch the NBA. It's inter very entertaining. And then, um. Occasionally, me and my father will watch uh, women's college basketball. Okay. Yeah. And do, are, do you follow Lakers, Clippers, or just any NBA teams? Um, I like the Clippers. Okay. They're very entertaining to watch. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some important dates from the Rancho Palos Verdes Public Works Department. And with more on the workshops offered, I caught up with Lauren Ramazani from RPV Public Works. Earth Day is coming up, so we have a lot of good events uh, scheduled. Let me tell you about them. One of them is um, the Shredding Day. That's for RPV residents, and it's free for them. And it's sponsored by EDCO and uh, RPV Public Works. And that allows residents to um, uh, securely get rid of their private documents, you know, their tax returns, mortgages, bank statements. And it is on April 20th, the weekend after uh, taxes are due. So it's from 9 to 12 at the Civic Center City Hall uh, parking lot uh, in RPV. And up to three bankers boxes people could bring. And um, at the same time, they also take electronics waste. And there is a free uh, mulch giveaway. The mulch itself 
called self-serve, so, you know, get the shovel and, you know. <laughs> um, there's also uh, a composting workshop that's scheduled for Saturday, April 6th at Hess Park. And um, uh, people from the county, consultants from the county are coming to teach uh, water-wise gardening, composting, um, uh, what plants would be good in the Palos Verdes area for planting, uh, erosion control. And uh, there will be a raffle of a compost bin for um, for the attendees and uh, for RPV residents. I mean, it's open to everybody, but um, RPV has a rebate program for its residents, composting rebate program. So there will be also compost bins and warm bins that are on sale um, uh, during that day. Every year, thousands of baby rabbits are purchased for Easter gifts with little thought of how to care for rabbits as pets. As a result, a staggering 80% of bunnies purchased end up abandoned and left out in the wild where many die within the first 48 hours. Bonna Tucker from Rabbit Rescue gives us more information on bunny care. Well, my daughter's boyfriend bought her a rabbit and she was in high school still, so I ended up bonding with the little one. She turned out to be, you know, a little soulmate of mine, and when she passed away, some friends of mine said, well, you know, they sent me um, a newsletter for a rabbit organization that was doing adoptions. So I went and adopted, and then I started fostering, but it, they were kind of geographically distant, so instead of just volunteering with that organization. I said, well, there's a lot of rabbits in need in this area, and little did I know what it would turn out to be. So we started our own foundation just to service this area. They're such amazing pets. What do you think is the biggest barrier for people to keep a, a, to keep a rabbit? Lack of education in the first place, and in the second place, if they buy them, and then they the rabbit gets to a certain age where, like I said, they spray or they nip because they're at an adoles adolescent stage of their life, the next step would be to get it spayed or neutered, and if they call around, they, it can be anywhere from the cheapest place is $65, but people have a hard time finding that. Some vets charge over $500 for a spay, and if they've paid $20 for the rabbit on the street corner, they don't want to pay $500 to get it fixed. What generally happens if you know somebody dumps a rabbit at a park? Well, in the case of the little one behind you that we were talking about, she's very small, and a hawk could pick her up. I've seen it happen. Um, or a dog, a stray dog, even, and most cats will be fine with the rabbit, but a feral cat that's hungry mm -hmm. will absolutely kill a small rabbit and you know, eat it. Um, so they don't last very long. They're domesticated when people dump them at the park, and they, if they think they're setting them free, they're actually making them food for something else. Right. Just talk about what people can do when they get a rabbit, what they need, what kind of things do they, they need to get. First of all, do their homework first. People don't know that, that it's a long-term commitment. Sure. They don't know about spay and neuter. And I would say, first and foremost, besides doing homework, is adopt from rescue. Because when you get them from us, you're getting a spayed and neutered animal that has had a vet check. Okay. Um, you know what size it's going to be, pretty much, because we don't adopt babies. We adopt young adults once they're fixed. And we will be your, your relationship coach with the bunny. So um, it's doing the homework. Uh, supporting rescue, um, which is, we're an endless source of future information if you would adopt from us. You've you got questions about your bunny find. If you buy one from a pet shop, they don't want to know you the next day. Where can we get more information about where they can come here to the rescue? Well, if you go to PetSave.org, there's um, a lot of different uh, buttons you can push on. If you want bunny care information, hit the Adopt button. Before we let you fill out the application, you've got to read our propaganda on proper care. Okay. So that's one source. Um, we can always just email us any questions you have. There's numerous House Rabbit Society websites that you can go to. Um, there's a wealth of information. If you just Google House Rabbit, you'll get some really good information or call us. For more information on Rabbit Rescue, you can go to their website at petsave.org. And finally, it was big fun on the peninsula, also known as Well of a Day. Thousands of residents from our community and beyond came out to the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center to enjoy the annual event sponsored by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and Los Serenos Day Point Vicente. Here's more from the event from Liz Brown Swanson. I think we have a great turnout today. It looks like uh, over 2,000 people. Spectacular weather. 
We did the best we could with the weatherman on that, and it came out okay. This has just been an incredible day. And from the San Pedro High marching band that just got finished playing, the jets going over, and uh, actually I think they were World War II planes, and uh, the sailboats, it's been just spectacular. It's 1983. I've been coming every year from Colorado. Wow. Just for the whale of a day. Sometimes I'll do it twice, or, or, you know, two times. Yeah. My favorite thing is the fact that everybody that's here is for one reason, because they care about our ocean and marine environment. And though everybody has a different role in it, they're all here for that one reason. That is my number one favorite part of Whale of a Day. Yeah, the whales, it's a good season. The whales, are, we're doing something right out there in the ocean. The whales are doing fine. One of the things I really love about the uh, Whale of the Day is the kids. They come in here and there's a lot of things for them to do, which are fun little rides, but they get to see a little bit of their, their natural background of where they live. And um, uh, I really think that engaging them and appreciating the beauty of where we live uh, will pass that on for future generations. We've been going to Whale of a Day since even before Ian was born. He's eight years old now, but I've always loved this day. And today is about as perfect a day as, as you can get. We've already seen some sea lions out in the kelp. They've seen two whales already this morning that have uh, actually started heading north. And I understand that the total whale count is over 800 this year, which is a huge increase over what the 10-year average is. Um, I really like how they set up a bunch of stuff, and I like, because um, me and my dad saw like a seal down there, and I like how um, me and my dad get to watch the whales. I, I think the booths themselves uh, are very interesting. Many of them are manned by um, uh, volunteers from the city, but the other interesting booths, you know, regarding wildlife and uh, uh, just other natural things, I find fascinating. My favorite here, my favorite is the uh, birds of prey, the uh, l l little hawks and falcons. I'm uh, I'm fascinated with this. I have been since uh, I've been a little kid. Types of events bring the small town feel, and neighbors get to talk to neighbors, and kids get to mingle, and it's it's really. Uh, something that brings the community together and RPV does that very well not only here at Whale of a Day but uh, the July 4th celebration is the, very similar in nature. We are so blessed here to be living in Rancho Palos Verdes and on this peninsula. This is actually a celebration of many groups and many environmental groups throughout the whole South uh, Southern California area so it's a great exciting day. Today is the 29th annual Whale of a Day. A whale's tongue can weigh 2,000 pounds. The whales migrate south to give birth in the warm waters of Baja, California. Whales can be seen with the naked eye from our location. Point Vincente is the best place in California to see whales. The whale's main food source is krill found in the Bering Sea. RPV is the best place to watch whales. Thanks, Liz. Well, the day is always a great way to spend the day in our community, that's for sure. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, make it a great day.